Hello! So it's been a while since I've posted a video on rerouting. Today I am working on a Jesmar reroot. I don't think I have any Jesmar reroot videos, so I figured I would share some tips. Right now I am threading my needle. Um, here is my yarn. It's a big um, skein of Deadstock Vintage. Not quite the original cabbie orange, the elusive cabbie orange, but close enough. <clears throat> not keeping my yarn too long, mainly because this yarn is um, unraveling quite quickly. So I'm only doing about eight loops at a time and then starting a new strand. All right, so needle is a long beading needle. It comfortably accommodates the yarn. These are just on Amazon, long beading needle. Just search long beading needle and you'll find uh, these packs of maybe, I think there's 20 or something that come in a pack and uh, they're very affordable. You should know though that they will only last you for one project. They are um, not the greatest quality, but at the same time, you have to understand that they are very thin. So um, if you're using them for a pro project this large, like it makes sense that uh, they will break. And by break breaking, where they break is um, at the eye of the needle. They just collapse after a while because you're constantly pulling, pulling, pulling through uh, the holes. So um, they, they are really affordable though. So I would, I would recommend that you buy one pack to start because there's many different sizes that come in the pack. There's like these really long ones with larger eyes, the, sorry, these short ones with larger eyes, long ones with larger eyes, and then there's a whole bunch with like smaller eyes that I haven't even used. Um, and there's, I'd say there's, they come with about four of these, maybe five, and the same with uh, these long ones. All right, so I have uh, my needle. I have knotted the end uh, very tightly. <clears throat> and I am right now working at the back of the head. And as you can see, I have a little mistake there. The loop was uh, too short. I'll show you how short it was. I estimated wrong so I just ended up pulling it and it doesn't really oh it doesn't really matter because I'll just re-sew a new loop and you won't be able to see that all right so before I even start sewing I'm just going to talk a little bit about the drilling the holes and whatnot so and what cabbage patch head I'm using so this is a head mold number four it was a very TLC Jesmar. <clears throat> Bodies in the garbage because it was that bad. I uh, definitely will have to touch up the freckles, but I'm going to do that afterwards. I initially started rerouting uh, with the original holes, which are... You'll see them around... No, even these ones have been drilled into a little bit. But the original holes, as you know, are very, very, very small. And that was fine for my needle. My needle easily went in and out of these very small holes. However, it was causing rapid degradation of the yarn. And so I decided, okay, I am going to take the extra time and drill all of the holes. But I also didn't want to drill them too large because I don't like the look. Um, ideally, I don't like the look of large holes. So I used the smallest drill bit that I had at the time. You know, there are smaller ones, of course. I used the smallest, I say largest, I used the smallest one that I had and I widened the holes. I also drilled the holes twice and that was because when the hole is jagged inside, that jagged plastic also contributes to rapid degradation of the yarn. Then I went and I scratched off all of the excess plastic. I don't do this for all my reroutes. I some reroutes, um, if I've given myself a one week um, time window to complete, I will make larger holes, approximately this large, 
the reason I have large holes here is simply because I couldn't find my tiny drill bit. But I will make large holes like this and when I am rerouting I will um, make up for the large hole um, by doubling my yarn. Um, and those reroutes are quite rapid. They only take me about a week to complete. This boy has been taking, taken me months because I've been taking a really long time. I really want him to look as close to authentic as possible. You can obviously tell right away by looking at him that he is a reroute, but I do want him to look as good as possible, as authentic as possible. And that means you do not double up on the yarn. You use a single yarn strand and you use all of the original holes. So I did take a lot of time, more time probably than the rerouting is going to take me just in drilling and then re-drilling the holes to make sure that um, the yarn will go in and out quite easily. Um, besides that, for prep, I don't think I need to mention anything else. I did bleach his face in the sun um, a week or so ago now that it's summer. And the other advantage to me doing this reroute in the summer is that the vinyl is already very soft because it's Jesmar and because there's a ton of holes. But the other thing that contributes to the vinyl being so easy to work with is uh, that it's summer and the temperature is, uh, um, room temperature is quite warm. I only have to go outside to do this. And the advantage to me being able to push his head in is that when I look inside, I can, um, I can see all the holes, which means that I did not have to drill these holes at an angle. Um, I can just push when I'm um, going through these holes, I can just push and uh, easily uh, sew in and out of them, which is what I will be doing right now. So let's just get right into it. I am going to be working on where, I, starting from where I made that mistake. But I am going to start from this hole right here because I, well, let's just see how it looks from the inside. I, I usually don't like starting from, um, if I've made a mistake, I'd like to start just new and then go back and then come back. But um, he, because I can easily push and see what the inside looks like and avoid any uh, bunching of yarn happening, I might actually start from this hole. So let's just see how it looks from the inside. Okay. Alright, the inside actually doesn't look too bad. I'm not sure if you can tell. Probably you can't see. But I'll just show you how it looks once my needle comes through. Alright, so my needle has come through very easily. And something cringy has happened, is that, and that is that my needle has gone through the yarn. And this is um, this can easily, easily, easily create bunching. But I'm going to try to prevent that by just holding the yarn, like this yarn, the previous loops yarn down. And I was able to get through that quite smoothly. And now I am going to go backwards. So to the, I'm going to basically correct the mistake. So I'm going, I do want to make sure that I'm not going through any yarn for this one. So I've just kind of pulled back the yarn, created more clearance in the hole. All right, so my needle. Notice that I have my finger here just to control what's happening on top as well. All right, so now I have this uh, loop here that cannot decide if it wants to stay like flat or if it wants to be twisted. I really am trying really hard for the loops to all stay in one position and not twist. So uh, the, the way to ensure, one of the ways anyway, to ensure that it stays in the in your intended position is while you're making the ne next loop, you have to make sure that you're holding this previous loop down 
in the position that you want it uh, to be. That's the first step. And obviously you're gonna come through. All right, so I've come through here. Good. I'm actually gonna do, I'm actually gonna sew this loop down in the position I want it to be. So for this, what you have to do is you actually have to go through the yarn and not the hole. You're actually kind of sewing it down. So I'm not gonna create a clearance. You know how normally I pull the yarn down so I can go through the hole? I'm not gonna actually do that because I want to sew this loop down. And so I'm gonna go through the yarn. Again, this is potentially gonna create a big mess, so I'm really controlling the situation here. Easing it through, easing it, easing it. All right. Now this is also twisting, might have to sew this loop down too. All right, and so beautiful. I'm just gonna move that out of the way for me here. There we go. Okay, there we go, it's fine side. All right, there we go. So now this loop is behaving and staying down. Um, some, what are some other tips I wanted to talk about? Um, another tip that I wanted to talk about is, oh, another way to untwist your yarn if it is getting very twisty and there's a lot of tension happening, and I have talked about this in a previous video, is you're just going to lift the head in the air and do you want me to see here? Okay. You're just going to let, you're just going to suspend the needle in the air and it's going to sort itself out. It's just going to twist, un untwist itself. And it's going to resolve the tension on its own. And also, if you just make sure you're not twisting the needle as you work and you're just keeping it in a simple, like you're not twisting it, you're really just keeping it in the same position as you go in and out, um, then you'll ensure that um, you're not creating tension either. But again, if you accidentally do create tension and you have a twisted loop, you just sew it down. Okay, I am at, at the end, because you've probably noticed that a lot of my loops still are twisting. At the end, I'm going to steam this anyway to correct all of this. And the other thing that's going to help my loops to stay down in the way that I want them to is obviously as more loops are added, the weight on um, these loops will hopefully make them behave. Uh, another tip I wanted to talk about that I have been practicing recently that I don't always do, especially in the winter, is uh, working on a non-fabric surface. I'm working on a non-fabric surface uh, because I've been noticing that a lot of my roots are getting fuzzy and I have to defuzz as I go, which is not fun um, and seems counterproductive, is... Um, Using a hard surface, a non-fabric surface, so oh, a surface essentially that is not going to attract the yarn and create fuzz. So I'm using this bulletin board. Um, bare skin is also a good idea because unless, I guess unless you have hair, but I don't know, or very dry skin, then it might get caught in the skin. But you essentially want a smooth surface. And um, so try to avoid fabric as much as possible so that the little fuzz in the yarn doesn't get attracted to it and further uh, ca and cause further pilling. Something else that another tip I wanted to mention is um, if you can afford to do it, um, try to um, try not to uh, save your yarn. Basically stop rerouting at about here. So I'm, I'm going to throw away all of this yarn, this length of yarn. Reason being is um, yarn starts to unravel. Um, and this yarn in particular has started to unravel, but our, all yarn does once you start removing it from the skein. It, it starts looking thicker than how it did when you bought it on the skein. So um, what I'm what I'm doing is I am just, and I can afford to do that because I have a massive skein here. I am actually stopping um, my sewing at about, I guess that's about 10 centimeters-ish, maybe a bit more, uh, 10 centimeters, um, so that my yarn is um, just looking good and uniform throughout. Okay, 
Um, so let's just get right into the rewriting so you can kind of see what I'm doing and I can talk about the tips as I go. I'm putting my finger in the previous loop so that I can ensure that the length is correct. I'm also pushing it down right away so that I can see that the length is also correct. So I'm struggling to find the hole, so I'm just going to push this even more. All right, so I'm getting re I'm getting ready to end this um, stretch of yarn. I'm gonna come out one more time. <clears throat> big pinch where the loop is going to end. Make a knot there. Pull, pull, pull to make it nice and tight. Snip. Take your all. Pull, 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 where uh, on the hole where it needs to go into. So that's the previous hole. So you're going to pull the yarn so that you're creating clearance. And we're going to dilate that hole. Okay. Uh, maybe about 10 seconds and also go as far as you can. Well, what I mean by going as far as you can is use the thicker part of the awl. All right. Now, this can take a few tries, and that's okay. It's a bit tricky. Now, I'm ready to go, so I'm going to place the knot right on top of where I've dilated the hole. And I'm also going to, because this is a really soft vinyl, I'm going to put my hand inside to prop up the vinyl so that it doesn't 
uh, bend too much. So it doesn't cave, sorry. And now I'm just gonna pop it in. And it looks, and I'm gonna verify and make sure that it has gone in. It has, but there still is a tail end sticking out. But I also just pulled it from the inside. Okay, and there I have, I have finished it off. So I did, I am gonna be wasting this length here. And if you can see already, it was fraying and starting to uh, unravel. Not a good look. I had to actually do redo the entire hairline because um, the yarn had started to unravel there. So, all right. So I hope um, that that helps. These tips help. Um, also, give yourself a ton of time to uh, reroute. Um, heads like this just because there are so many holes. I have not counted if you know approximately how many there are. Uh, leave a comment um, comment below, but uh, give yourself a lot of time. I'm giving myself 10 days. Um, in 10 days, um, because I'm going to be in Montana and I'll be able to ship this off to my friend for whom I am making this. I hope she loves it. Happy Cappy Restoration, guys.